everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Now, we have a super special one for you today. I've been hinting at for a while that I've been collaborating with another content creator on some very special content, and today's the day you're going to get to see what we've been working on. I've been working with Lauren over at Unraveling the Pattern to put together some Wheel of Time battle breakdown videos. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Battle of the Two Rivers. Now, before we get into the video, if you haven't checked out Unraveling the Pattern's YouTube channel, you need to make sure to do that. Lauren makes some of the highest quality Wheel of Time content on the internet. He makes some badass graphics and his writing and research are literally amazing. If you have not seen him yet, you need to check him out. Let me throw you over to Lauren real quick so he can tell you a bit about his channel before we get into the video. Hey, my name is Lauren. I make videos and motion graphic animations all about the Wheel of Time. My channel is called Unraveling the Pattern. So far, I've made four deep dive videos talking about the books, the lore behind the wheel and the great pattern, the one power, and I made an animation all about the first age history. That one is part of a series I'm working on called Wheel of Timelines, where I'm unraveling all of the history of the Wheel of Time series age by age. I also love to collaborate with content creators. I had so much fun collaborating with Nablus on this, and I hope you enjoy it. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Back to you, Nablus. Thanks, Lauren. Let's get right into it, though, guys. Let's hit the spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning there will be major spoilers running all the way through A Shadow Rising, the fourth book in the series. If you haven't finished The Shadow Rising, come back to this video once you have. It's still going to be here. You've been warned. I don't want you spoiled. So let's break down the Battle of the Two Rivers. The Battle of the Two Rivers was a battle fought between the forces of the Shadow, mainly Trollocs and Merdral, and the residents of the Two Rivers region of Andor, and this takes place in the book The Shadow Rising. The farmers and sheep herders of the Two Rivers are ultimately successful in liberating their homeland, but let's start by setting the scene of what led to the battle. In the late summer of 999 of the New Age, a large contingent of roughly 500 Children of the Light under the dual leadership of Dane Bornhold and Padan Fane, going by Ordeath at the time, enter the Two Rivers with the intention of rooting out dark friends in the area. In actuality, Padan Fane, and again under the guise of Ordeath, had manipulated the Lord Captain Commander of the Children of the Light, Hadron Nile, into sending this small army into the Two Rivers. His purpose was simple. Cause enough damage and pain to the residents of the Two Rivers that Randall Thor would be forced to personally come to the Two Rivers, and then Fane might be able to kill him and end his kind of eternal torment. The Children of the Light enter the Two Rivers and set up camp just south of Watch Hill, and they begin patrols around the different towns of the Two Rivers and the many farms, searching for dark friends. As Padon Fane was disrupting the plans for the Shadow, and was already considered a renegade, Slayer was dispatched by the forces of the Shadow to kill Fane. He enters the Two Rivers under one of his personas as Lord Luke, a hunter for the Horn. He brought with him a few hundred Trollocs transported into the Two Rivers through the use of the Manetheran Waygate in the far southwest of the Two Rivers in the Mountains of Mist. The White Cloaks served to protect Fane, though, and the Trollocs that were sent were not enough to kill Fane with the protection of those White Cloaks all around him. So basically, at the time, the people of the Two Rivers are caught between the forces of the Shadow and the White Cloaks under the lead of Padon Fane. No! During this time, the Althor and Cawthon farms were burned, as well as the Avara family was slaughtered by a small white cloak force led by Fane. Halsbet and Harrow Luhan and Matt's two sisters and mother were arrested and taken to the white cloak camp to be held. Tam Althor and Abel Cawthon fled into the Westwood and remained in hiding. At the same time, two Aes Sedai, Varen Mathwin and Alana Mosfani, had come to the Two Rivers searching for girls that could channel. They became trapped in the Two Rivers, with one of Alana's warders being killed, fleeing from the White Cloaks. They were hidden by the Women's Circle in Emmons Field, along with their warders in an old sick house in the woods outside of Emmons Field. During this time, Rand, Matt, and Perrin were in Tyr, after Rand had taken the Stone of Tyr with the aid of the Aiel. The three boys would hear of troubles back in their home, but both Matt and Rand were told by the Finns to head to Roydeon, so it falls to Perrin to go back and take care of Emmons Field. He travels to the Two Rivers via the Ways with Loyal, Fael, Bane, Chiad, and Gaul. As they arrive in the Two Rivers, they're attacked by Trollocs as they leave the Ways. They defeat the Trollocs here, but Loyal is able to lock the Waygate from the outside so no further Trolloc can come into the Two Rivers. From this point, Perrin realizes that it is not simply White Cloaks in the Two Rivers, but also Trollocs. They head through the sand hills that are at the foot of the Mountains of Mist and into the Westwood snaking north. Perrin chooses to move towards the Althor farm first rather than directly for Emmons Field. After about three days of travel, they arrive at the Althor farm and find it burned. 
Realizing the danger to his family, Heron leaves the next morning for the two rivers, traveling through the Westwood, and emerging slightly south of the town and enters through the Winespring Inn. Here he learns about the fate of his family and the capture of the Cawthon girls and the Luhans by the White Cloaks. Bran and Maren Alvier explain to Perrin the situation, that basically the White Cloaks are protecting them from the Trollocs, so they don't dare stand up to the White Cloaks when they arrest people. Perrin is taken to see the Aes Sedai at the old sick house, and from there he convinces the Aes Sedai to aid him in rescuing the people that have been taken captive by the White Cloaks. He leads a contingent to rescue them, including Fael, Tam, Abel, Bane, Chiad, Gaul, Varen, and her warder Tomas and they depart through the Westwood and head towards the White Cloak Camp near Watch Hill. Along the way, they stop at the Alcine farm to find a number of families staying there together. Heron convinces them that they would be better off leaving the farm and grouping together at Hemmons Field. He explains that if they all stood together, they would not need the White Cloak's protection. The people there depart for the two rivers, but the four younger boys stay with Perrin and choose to accompany him and his party as they head for the White Cloak encampment. Perrin forces them to stop at a number of new farms along the way, and he gives the same warning, and all of the people agree to head to the Two Rivers. Heron also picks up an additional 13 more members of his party. As they arrive at the White Cloak camp, they sneak in at night and rescue the Luhans and the Cawthons, while Varen covers their escape by calling a storm. Rather than returning to Emmons Field, though, Heron stays out in the wilderness with a number of the men that he recruited along the way, and they begin to hunt Trollocs. For roughly six days, they moved about the Two Rivers region, hunting packs of Trollocs and ambushing them with arrow fire from a distance to great success. On the sixth day after the rescue of the prisoners, Fael and Lord Luke visit Perrin at his deceased family's farm and inform him that the majority of the people that live near Emmonsfield had fled to the city and the villagers are making preparations to defend themselves and fortifying the village. Lord Luke attempts to get Perrin to return to the village, but Perrin believes that there are more Trollocs about and he vows to continue hunting. Unknown to Perrin at this time, Luke is commanding the Trollocs and sends a party of them to ambush Perrin and his men as they attempt to ambush the Trollocs. Perrin and his men move through the woods and set their ambush, but they are almost overrun by Trollocs. Perrin's small force was attacked by roughly a hundred Trollocs, and they barely escape after taking many casualties. Perrin himself is injured with an arrow through his side. In seeking refuge, the group falls upon a camp of tinkers that had circled their wagons. This is the same group that Perrin had encountered before at the Eye of the World, and they treat the wounded in the night. Perrin attempts to convince the tinkers to accompany the group back to Emmons Field, but they refuse, saying that they'll move and that's actually what protects them. During his sleep that evening, Perrin discovers that the Waygate had been reopened and that the Trollocs were flooding into the two rivers. Perrin attempts to leave and go close the Waygate himself, but he is still wounded with the arrow, and Fael forces him back to the two rivers, where eventually he is healed by Alana. What they find when they return to the village is that the two rivers has been very well prepared to defend itself. There are fortifications, and they've got plans in place for if Trollocs attack. While Perrin recovers, Loyal and Gaul make their way to close the Waygate, moving very stealthily. Now, while they're off moving towards the Waygate, a Trolloc force of about 500 Trollocs attacks the village, starting the first battle of Evans Field. The village is defended by roughly 200 Two Rivers bowmen behind lines of stakes and wagons blocking the gaps between the buildings. Two Rivers bowmen have a range of roughly 300 paces, which counts for quite a distance among bowmen of the time. Also defending the village were Alana and Varen Sedai and the catapults that they had built with the aid of the villagers. The Trollocs did not really employ any tactics other than all-out charge here. The 500 Trollocs charged the lines of the Two Rivers bowmen. The edge of the trees was roughly 400 paces from the town, so as soon as the Trollocs began the charge, they were fired upon and felled one by one by the Two Rivers bowmen. Additionally, the catapults fired projectiles into the Trolloc ranks as they charged and exploded with Aes Sedai help, killing many Trollocs. All of the Trollocs and the Merdral were killed before they even reached the edge of the town. Now, this Trolloc attack was simply a test, with the bulk of the Trolloc force not yet being assembled. At the conclusion of the battle, the Tinkers, who had refused to join the villagers earlier, stagger into town. Many of them were killed by Trollocs, and the few survivors make their way into Emmons Field. Not long after, a contingent of 400 White Cloak soldiers approach the town, attempting to arrest Perrin. Bran Alvier and the townsfolk rebuff the White Cloaks and tell them to leave, but Perrin invites them into the town to help defend it and keep them from being ambushed on their way back to their camp. Despite the hatred between the two groups of people, the White Cloaks agree and enter the town. For the next seven days, small bands of Trollocs attack the city each day, being defeated each time. None of these attacks are major attacks, but very much skirmishes like the previous one. But after seven days of fighting, 
supplies are beginning to run very low within the town. At the end of the seventh day from the first battle, a messenger arrives in the village on the brink of death asking to see Perrin from the south. As Perrin meets the messenger, the messenger is able to say, we are coming, before dying right in Perrin's arms. Perrin assumes that he's just a man from another farm trying to make their way into the village. It is at this time that Loyal and Gaul return to Emmonsfield as well, with Loyal carrying Gaul in his arms. Loyal explains that four days ago they were able to find and close the Waygate, keeping any more Trolloc reinforcements from reaching the two rivers. However, Loyal and Gaul report that there are close to 2,000 Trollocs and 50 Merdral in the two rivers, and they are headed for Emmonsfield. On the eve of the battle, Perrin sends Fael away from the two rivers to reach Camelin and let the Queen of Andor know what's going on in the two rivers. Now, really, this was just his excuse to get Fael to leave because he thought he was going to die. But Fael does agree on the condition that she and Perrin are married. So they get married, and then she departs Emmons Field, heading north. Directly before the coming battle, the White Cloaks announce their intention to leave Emmons Field and go back to their camp. But Perrin convinces them to stay and fight by telling them that he will allow them to arrest him after the victory if they help in the battle. The White Cloaks agree to stay. This time, the Trollocs move upon the village from both the north and the south, splitting their force into two equal groups, each consisting roughly of a thousand Trollocs and 25 Merdral. The town was defended by a hundred or so bowmen on each of its lines, followed by men lining the stakes in a group that barred the entrances to the town. There were six catapults built at the center of the town, facing both directions and manned by the Aes Sedai. The women and tinkers were assembled at the center of the green, also with 400 or so white cloaks sitting in reserve to fill the line where needed. The Trolloc armies attack at the same time, charging towards the defenders of Emmons Field from both sides. The defenders fire arrows and catapult shots into the armies of Trollocs, killing many, but their numbers were far greater than the first attack, and the Trollocs managed to reach the barriers of the city, where the defenders are forced into hand-to-hand -hand combat. The lines of defenders begin to bulge, and sensing that the lines are going to break, Perrin orders a retreat further into the village. Despite the ordered retreat, the lines of defenders were on the brink of breaking. Despite promising to aid in the defense of Emmons Field, the White Cloaks stay at the center of town. The women of the town, noticing that help is needed to hold the line, charge into the weakening lines of defense and fill the holes, preventing the Trollocs from overrunning the town's defenses. As the Trollocs had fully committed to their charge and fought right to the town's defenses, a force of bowmen from Watch Hill arrives from the north, led by Fael, and begins firing on the rear of the northern Trolloc army. Simultaneously, another group of bowmen arrives from the south, up from Devon Ride, and they begin firing on the southern Trolloc army. Caught between the defenses and the Two Rivers bowmen, the Trolloc armies are completely destroyed, and the defense of the village is complete. The messenger that had died in Perrin's arms the night before had actually been from Devon Ride, letting the people of Emmonsfield know that they were coming to help. And rather than going straight to Camelin, Fael rallied the men of Watch Hill to the defense of Emmonsfield. All of those forces converging at once on the town ended in the complete and utter victory for the Two Rivers people. Despite their lack of help, the White Cloaks attempt to arrest Perrin, but they are rebuked for not helping in the battle, and a few hundred Two Rivers bows are pointed directly at them. Perrin orders them to leave the Two Rivers and not to return, and so they do leave, thus ending the Battle of the Two Rivers. The aftermath of the battle sees the Two Rivers elevating Perrin and Fael to Lord and Lady, and a massive expansion of the population due to refugees from Terrabon and other areas. So what do you think of the Battle of the Two Rivers? What other battles would you like to see us break down? Make sure to let us know in the comments of the video, and make sure to not only go subscribe to Unraveling the Pattern, but you can also support Lauren on his Patreon. The link is in the description of this video. Make sure to support him and follow his work if you like what you see here. Also, like this video and subscribe to my channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. That's pretty much all I do here, and so if you subscribe, you're going to get a lot more stuff like this. Join my Discord server to be a part of the community by clicking the link in the description as well. And lastly, shop everything Wheel of Time at www.shopwheeloftime.com. You can pick up books, merch, maps, and some funny stuff. All of that goes to support thegreatblight.com and further grow the Wheel of Time community. Thanks to all of you for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do My mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?